good afternoon. This is a, another episode of the Pacific Northwest Vlog. Today, I'm staying pretty close to home. I'm on Whidbey Island, which is where I live. And uh, <clears throat> originally, I was supposed to go to Oregon and do some backpacking in Oregon and see the sea stacks that are in the movie Goonies. Um, that, those plans got canceled uh, mostly because the transmission in my car is being wonky and I don't much feel like getting stranded and being hours and hours away from home. So, just kept it close. But, uh, since I'm on Woodby Island and eventually I was gonna do an episode about Whidbey Island, I figured I'd go ahead and just knock it out. So that's what this episode will be about. Um, if you don't know about Whidbey Island, it's the fourth largest island in the uh, continental United States and it originally belonged to the indigenous people or Native Americans and uh, it gets its name from uh, a guy named George Vancouver who sailed all the way from England and named it Whidbey Island after his sailing master, Joseph Whidbey. And the Dutch came over and basically started taking the land and you're probably already very familiar with the U.S. expansion out west and the uh, American Indian Wars and all of that. Um, so that's basically uh, a rough rundown of Whidbey Island and... Um, Down here, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, there's a statue that uh, pays tribute to the indigenous heritage, but the dark side of Whidbey Island is the indigenous history often is uh, overlooked and gets very little recognition. Um, even local parades and uh, events often don't give recognition. And this is the statue I was talking about uh, that gives um, tribute to the indigenous tribes that used to inhabit the island. Um, but uh, from the way the 
locals act, you wouldn't really know that this was originally home to indigenous people. And uh, George Vancouver had quite an impact on Washington State as a whole back in the 17 and 1800s. Um, sure, you've heard of uh, Mount Rainier. Its original name was Mount Tacoma, which roughly translates into Mother of All Water. And that's because the snowpacks that come down from Mount Tacoma end up filling, I think it's like five river systems. So uh, Mount Tacoma has a large impact and uh, unfortunately a lot of the indigenous history is overshadowed because a lot of the history here is often told from the perspective of uh, Euro-Americans and the Dutch and um, the indigenous people didn't really get their story told. In fact, an example is this statue right ahead um, celebrating the Dutch coming to the island and taking it from the indigenous people. And um, every, I think it's April, they have a parade that's called the Holland Happening, which is a celebration of the Dutch people moving here. And every May, maybe June, about a month or two after the Holland Happening Parade, you have the Water Festival, which is in Coopville, which is on this island. Um, but the, the Water Festival, which is originally supposed to honor the indigenous history of the island, ends up incor incorporating the Dutch settlers. And so they end up playing a bunch of Dutch sea shanties and they try to pass it off as harmonious living. Uh, there wasn't really anything harmonious about it. It was just, we've come to slaughter your people and take your land. There's really nothing you can do about it. And so, the modern events and the modern uh, storytelling doesn't really do the history any justice and often ends up talking about how great the Dutch were and are. Because um, the Dutch just came here, they took the land and started farming it. And why you would start farming on an island that's surrounded by seawater and has ample fishing I just don't understand. But um, that farming has led to uh, I believe what's called red kelp, which is highly toxic. And so 
you can't actually fish uh, very close to shore. You've got to go a bit further out if you want to be able to fish. And so, uh, what brings up another problem is the overfishing. Um, one of the great tourist attractions for Whidbey Island was the fact that um, a lot of whales come through the area. Well, without the fish, the whales aren't going to come through, especially not the orcas. And without that, you lose a part of your tourist attraction. And um, if you really want to see whales, the best thing to do is actually go north up to uh, the San Juan Islands and go on whale watching tours. Um, that's the, the best way to see whales. Every once in a while, if you go down to the Coopville Wharf, or if you get lucky and you're walking along West Beach, or if you're crossing the sound on the ferry, you might see whales, but primarily you need to go north to, to the San Juan Islands to see, uh, to see whales. Because without that, you're not going to see very many whales. Um, but uh, that's just kind of a, a brief rundown of the, the island. Um, many more characters... Uh, who committed their own atrocities. Um, one in particular was Isaac Eby, who uh, came here, basically butchered and murdered, uh, raped, and did horrible things to the Indians, um, or the indigenous people, I should say. And... Uh, in an act of revenge, uh, the indigenous people uh, end up killing him and beheading him. Um, and there's uh, a lot more to it than that, but that's for another episode. Um, here looking out onto the uh, the sound and uh, clear to clear to cross working my way to City Beach and Oak Harbor uh, and uh, just gonna find a nice little spot to sit and chat. Um, cool thing about this location, sometimes you'll see, uh, sea otters, and, um, one of the big complaints, especially of local tour, or not locals, but of tourists coming to the area, is, uh, They think it's a damn petting zoo. 
And you gotta remember, these are wild animals and they will attack you. Whew. Yeah, nice little stroll. And that's not exactly a good idea to go trying to pet wild animals. Um, and seals and otters are jerks. They really are. They'll drown baby seals and basically hold them hostage. They're a bunch of jerks, so they're not as cute as people think they are. And... Um... It's just best to avoid the wild animals. And if you want to see them, see them from a distance. But, anyway, uh, it is quite a gorgeous day here on Whidbey Island, as you can see. Um, one thing I've noticed about um, the Pacific Northwest, and at first I thought it was just my apartment specifically, but... From what I've uh, heard, just from talking to other people, um, a lot of homes and a lot of apartments don't have uh, air conditioning. And frankly, you don't really need it uh, because it stays pretty cool here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, maybe a couple of months out of the year you get those traditional hot summer days but even then um especially living near the ocean and opening your windows and there being a lot of tree cover uh just that alone can lower the temperature in your house by like 10 degrees and it's not really necessary to have AC and it, it generally stays pretty cool um, which I like that, and now that we're in September, I'm going to see, start seeing more of the, the fall weather, and it's going to get even cooler, which makes me pretty happy, so, uh, I'm ready for it, and... Apparently that's even a thing in like downtown Seattle with the apartments and all of that. It's, it's not just Whidbey Island, it's pretty much throughout the state of Washington where a lot of homes don't have AC just because of the natural environment. And I've been pretty happy with it. Yeah, there's some days that are just really hot and gross, but if I only have to survive one day of gross hot weather, and my electric bill is only $28, I'll take it. Um, so that's been one of the, the great joys is it generally stays pretty nice and cool, um, also on a, uh, 
completely different topic. Um, Whidbey Island is pretty close to the Canadian border. Maybe about an hour and a half drive from Whidbey Island to the Canadian border or border. <laughs> um, getting a little ahead of myself. Um, up on the uh, Canadian border, if you're crossing at the Peace Arch, um, maybe take you an hour to get from the Peace Arch border crossing to Vancouver. Um, and Vancouver's a, a pretty cool city. I'll, uh, I'll venture back there and do a video there as well. Um, if you're wondering, um, the best way, well, I don't know about other states, but the state of Washington has what they call the enhanced driver's license and it acts as a passport and you can get into uh, into Canada and um, I talked about this in another video I'm trying to upload that other video um, but for some reason uh, YouTube's not uploading it. Um, don't know why. But I'm uh, quite fond of Canada. It's, it's a pretty cool place. Even though I give it a bit of a hard time for using the metric system and uh, I prefer they convert to freedom fractions, as I call them. Uh, do everything by 12s here in the U.S. Just make life easier. <laughs> uh, but, oh well. Uh, not a bad country, not a bad place to be. Um... I quite enjoyed my time in Canada. <sighs> and so, hopefully I can get my transmi transmission fixed sooner rather than later. It is under warranty, so cost really isn't the the issue even if I've got to do a bit of a a payment out of pocket that's fine um, it's more of how long is it gonna take how serious is the problem um, so that way I can venture down to Oregon and do the trip that I was originally supposed to do this weekend and venture to Mount Tacoma and other cool places throughout the state of Washington and the Pacific Northwest. and uh, take some more videos and show some more interesting places. Um, and, uh, oh, while I'm thinking about it, since we're on the topic of Whidbey Island, um, one cool thing, so, a lot of you have probably seen the new uh, Top Gun Maverick movie. Um, it was actually filmed uh, here on Whidbey Island. 
and in the Cascades. Um, there's a naval air station here on Whedby Island, so you'll see um, a lot of F-18 uh, growlers flying over, um, and a lot of the uh, scenes at the base on Top Gun were at the Naval Air Station base here on Whidbey Island. And in one of the opening scenes of the movie, you'll actually see the uh, NASB patch on um, on a locker or whatever, and I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, the, uh, a lot of the locals are pretty proud of the, uh, the Naval Air Base here, and, <clears throat> um, there's also a lot of locals that aren't. And um, one because of the the air noise from the planes, and it can be quite loud. But also, um, not just here on Whidbey, but throughout the, the western United States in general, um, water shortages are becoming a, a problem. And if you drive uh, on SR-20 coming from Coopville into Oak Harbor, you will see there's a sign that shows you the water levels of Oak Harbor. And right now it's below normal. Um, you're getting a lot of overpopulation on this island. Um, In part because you have people from California moving north because they're escaping the wildfires and also you have people leaving Seattle you have retirees coming here and building homes and it just keeps adding on um, this isn't like the East Coast where water is bountiful. Ooh, excuse me. Um, it will eventually strain the natural resources of the island, um, especially with the base if it keeps adding thousands of people and then thousands more people just keep moving here um, it'll really strain the, the local resources because there's just not enough and even housing is an issue here especially on the island um, I locked out and, uh, when I first moved here, the HR manager was very concerned about, uh, me being able to find housing and I did luck out and um, found 
a two bedroom apartment that I live in by myself. Um, but, uh, that was really out of luck that I found that apartment because typically, uh, landlords would rather rent to the, uh, the service members especially with the housing allowances if they get any I'm sure they do because um, it's basically guaranteed payment and running to someone like me who's just you know, going off of my own salary and doesn't really have like a, a housing allowance that's dished out. Well, that creates more risk for the landlord. But I lucked out and found a lovely little spot in Oak Harbor. It's very central, um, which makes it great for um, even just walking to the grocery store or um, walking, uh, to the water here, or if you're like me, you like biking as well, I have an electric bike, and I can ride that pretty far, and never have any problems um, can ride it to the grocery store can ride it to the the state parks on the island and uh, do all of my grocery shopping and outdoor activities so very fortunate to uh, end up where I ended up um, don't know how I got that lucky but a win's a win and I'll take it so But with that said, uh, I'll go ahead and wrap this video up and hopefully I can uh, get my transmission fixed soon and uh, start venturing out again and get to... Um, more places and do more videos and uh, talk more about the Pacific Northwest but until then I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you did please like it and subscribe to my channel thank you and have a wonderful holiday weekend and Talk to you next time.